Why is sanitation important? Why are your microgreens moldy? How do you sanitize? We're gonna answer all these questions coming up, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode here with Princeton Microgreens. Um, today we're going to talk about something really important. Uh, we're going to talk about sanitization. Um, so, the reason why sanitization is so important, because I mean, I guess I'll go ahead and give you a little story. So, recently um, I have a pretty good friend of mine uh, about, you know, a couple blocks down the road who um, starting to grow microgreens at home, but more as a hobby. And uh, he was growing sunflower, and no matter what he did, his sunflower just had big, enormous, like, fluff, it looked like giant cotton balls the size of a softball, right smack in the middle of his um, sunflower. He couldn't figure it out. He was doing everything he thought he should do to sanitize, right? Well, I went over there finally and I said, okay, let's actually grow some sunflower. I'm gonna watch you and see what you do, see your whole process from start to finish, okay? <laughs> At the very beginning of the grow, I noticed something that was, um, I don't think most people would, would realize. And what he was doing was, is he, was, he had these, you know, he had his tray here, for instance, okay? And the countertop, when he was watering, he was using, using his sink um, in his kitchen to water. And when he was doing that, his countertop was very wet, right? And he was actually setting his tray on the sink and spraying his tray with water, which is fine, right? But here's the kicker. The, the countertop was, was right next to the sink. It was very dirty, right? Like they actually say your sink area in your kitchen is one of the most uh, you know, has the most bacteria and everything on it, right? So when he was taking that wet tray on the bottom and he was taking it and putting it down on his countertop to water, he would lift that tray up and it was picking up all those germs on the countertop next to his sink. And then he was taking it and he was stacking his microgreen trays with all of those germs on the bottom right on top of each other. Right? So he was like, oh, I was doing, you know, everything I thought I should do. I was sanitizing my trays, you know, I was, I was being really clean. I was trying to sanitize the seed, um, you know, everything. And it turns out that all it took was him just setting a tray down on a countertop to pick up all those germs on this countertop, right? Um, so just kind of food for thought there, you know, sanitation is really important. Um, sometimes we kind of, you know, overlook it and, 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 you don't realize, you know, the, the kind of, you know, bacteria and pathogens that can really get in on your trays and it is a pain to get rid of. Um, so I really wanted to, you know, take a second to, to really put this video out there and kind of discuss all of these types of things. So um, first, let's go ahead and get into, um, you know, tray cleaning. After you're done your microgreens, right, um, you obviously wash your trays. Um, it's, it's the most, it's the, it sucks, <laughs> right? Washing microgreens trays is, um, it's not fun. You know, it's, it's definitely the least fun part about the business, right? Um, making money is fun. Selling at the farmer's market is fun to most people. So I know some of you, you don't like to talk to people so much, but you know, growing is fun. Um, but washing trays is, is terrible, right? So, um, but real quick, let's just go through it. Um, so first what you want to do is you want to, um, you know, obviously use some like, uh, like some Dawn or antibacterial, um, soap. Um, and then you want to scrub them down really good. I actually have two scrubbers here that I got. You can get these from any supermarket, um, in like the cleaning aisle or anything like that. I really like this big one right here because it, it really allows me to get down, um, you know, into these grooves here. And that's actually another reason why I actually love these bootstrap farmer trays. Um, I actually got these brand new bootstrap farmer trays. They changed them up a little bit. I just got them today. Um, I'm gonna put a video out hopefully really soon uh, about my review on them because um, I really like them and there's some few things to mention that's new about them. So, but anyways, as opposed to a black tray, so a black tray here, the grooves are very, very deep, 
right? And because of that, it's a lot harder to get in there and really scrub it clean, right? So that's another reason why I really like the bootstrap farmer trays because they are a little bit easier to clean. Um, plus the material of the tray, um, it's a little, like, I don't know, the, the, the roots just don't stick to it for some reason. As opposed to the black trays, the roots really grab onto the plastic. I, I don't know why, what the difference is. Um, this is almost like a non-stick surface, right? So anyways, so you scrub it all out, right? Um, and then I actually have this small little brush as well that I got, and this is really good for getting in those, um, those uh, sides and the corners and things like that, that this brush is, it, it doesn't really get into those corners really well, right? At all. So that's why I always have this little brush as well. I just kind of go through, you know, uh, do it real quick. Um, and then one thing I want to mention, I actually, uh, my hold tray, so that's, that green tray is the, uh, the one without holes, right? So that's the one that holds my water. Um, now my white trays uh, are the ones with my holes. And the reason why I do that is because I actually really like the color white um, when cleaning. Um, because I actually can see, sometimes you'll start to see little orange um, in the crevices, right? And if you see that orange, um, that means it's dirty and it's not clean. So I know, and it will come off. These trays, they, like the, this white, you're thinking to yourself, white, that's a terrible idea. There's dirt, there's all kinds of stuff, it's gonna get stained. No, it, it doesn't stain. Like I've been using these for many, many months, um, just countless of grows, and um, it only, show like the orange will be there, it, it will scrub off, I promise you. And that's how I know my trays are clean. Um, it's really, it's a lot harder to see kind of with the green trays. Um, if you were to do um, like the green tray with the holes in it, it'd be a lot harder to see, um, you know, the roots stuck to there. So um, that's why I really like the white trays for my holes because that's, this is where all your roots are and stuff like that, right? So, um, so it allows me to really dig down deep um, if I start to see any areas, um, you know, with those orange spots. So, um, so anyways, so that's, that's um, you know, what you wanna do when you wash your trays, um, you know, in the sink or, you know, outside, however you wanna do it, it's perfectly fine. Um, because you actually, just because you wash your trays does not mean they're sanitized, right? Um, and you can sanitize in a dishwasher, um, but the problem is, is that, I've heard of these trays warping the dishwasher, and then what happens is when you stack the tray on top of another, you know, it'll, it, it won't be straight. It'll kind of be like crooked or warped like this, and they'll kind of, you know, stick up. And um, so I, I'm pretty sure you don't want to use the dishwasher for these. Um, I'm not even sure that they're dishwasher safe. I haven't even looked it up. I think somebody told me that if you keep on the top shelf of the dishwasher, but how many trays can you really put on the top shelf of a dishwasher, one or two at a time? Um, that'd be nonsense, right? Um, so uh, I, I do use the dishwasher though. I put, I have a dishwasher setting on my dishwasher for uh, doing my mason jars. So I use mason jars to soak my seeds, right? Um, and they get all kinds of, you know, gross inside those mason jars. So I'll, I'll clean them out. I'll actually use this. I can stick it in and kind of twirl around in the mason jar. And then I'll put it in the dishwasher for the sanitization uh, purposes. Um, and it gets super hot in there, the steam just, it just bakes those, those mason jars so they come out clean. Um, and then I put them right back on the shelf again for next time, right? So that's the mason jars. Um, so now that you actually have your tray, it's washed. Um, I usually will take them and I'll dry them out. Um, I'll just put them like this right here. These are all drying out right here. I'll just put them on here and just kind of make a pyramid and let them dry out. I have the um, dehumidifier over here going because you know, when you're drying out trays, the room's gonna get really muggy. Um, keep your dehumidifier going, you won't notice it. Uh, so it should be no problem at all. Uh, so, and then, um, so now that we have them dry, we've gone and scrubbed them. Um, now you actually wanna sanitize the trays, right? Um, and, and honestly, you don't have to sanitize your trays every single grow, but I would say at least sanitize your trays once a month. And that's enough for like, two to three grows um, during the course of the month um, to get through without completely sanitizing your trays. Um, it's up to you if you wanna do it every single time, um, but it's really time consuming. And I don't really think it's necessary every single grow um, to sanitize, um, but again, it's, it's up to you. Uh, so for sanitization, so there, I have different types of sanitization that I wanna talk about um, for sanitizing your trays. Um, first, we actually have the, uh, the hydrogen peroxide food grade 3%. Um, for this right here, uh, you're actually gonna mix it. Um, I have all my 
formulas written down here, so <laughs> pardon me. Um, this, uh, you can mix this with one gallon of water for about five ounces of this, right? And you can put it in like a sprayer like this or something along that line, um, and then basically use it to kind of spray down your trays. Um, again, I like to wait for the trays to be dry before I do that because if they're soaking wet and I spray it, I, I, I kind of feel like it's not getting on there, right? It's kind of, I'm just spraying the, the wet water that's on there, if that makes sense. Uh, so I wait for it to dry first before spraying it. Um, don't forget with hydrogen peroxide. So um, this is a white bottle. Um, you want to keep this under the sink or somewhere where it's dark um, because hydrogen peroxide, I believe it like turns in the water if it's exposed to light, right? And you kind of want to do the same thing if you're, you're putting into this. Um, you know, if you know you're going through one of these when you sanitize all your trays, then you're perfectly fine. But you know, once you mix it, um, I actually have another one over here I have wrapped in uh, um, duct tape, <laughs> believe it or not. And I use this uh, for uh, sanitizing my sunflowers, but we'll get that in a second. So, um, so that's if you wanna use hydrogen peroxide to sanitize your trays. Um, the next I'll talk about is bleach. Now, I don't use bleach. Um, I took this over from my laundry cabinet over there, um, but I wanted to talk about it because some of you might. Um, and to be honest, you use such a little amount of bleach. I believe it's even almost safe to, I'm not, I'm not telling you to drink it, but I'm like, I, you use such a little amount. I believe there's even bleach in like drinking water and like in some cities and stuff like that, right? Just a, a hair amount and I guess it, it, um, like it cleanses the water or something. So, um, but don't, don't hold me to that. Just something I read somewhere. I don't know. So, but if you do want to use bleach, you're just going to use one table of bleach, a uh, one tablespoon of bleach for one gallon of water, right? And then you can put it into a spray bottle again, you know, something like this, and you can use that. Um, I would also recommend afterwards. Uh, see that the the hydrogen peroxide will kind of evaporate, and you really don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry about washing your trays off again, right? The bleach, on the other hand, if you're using the bleach spray to sanitize your trays, I really honestly think that you should probably like spray them down again or wash them afterwards. Um, you know, stick them under the sink and and rinse them after you've sprayed them with the bleach um, solution, right? So, but I just kind of want to put that out there. Um, that is um, a a mix that I actually took um, directly from uh, like the, the FDA and Af agricultural websites um, that they use. Um, so that is approved, okay? Um, but again, that's up to you if you want to use it. And the last one I want to talk about is um, vinegar, right? I know a lot of you have heard um, vinegar is a, uh, it's a disinfectant and you can use it for its sanitization. So um, the mix is very easy. It's just one to one, right? So one cup of water, one cup of vinegar, one gallon of water, one gallon of vinegar, you know? Um, and then when you mix that up, you can just put it in, again, into something like this, a spray bottle or whatever, um, and then you can use that to spray down your trays. Um, and this is as organic as it gets, right? I mean, you never have to worry about vinegar. Um, I mean, you can obviously drink this if you wanted. Um, I don't like to drink vinegar. I know some people do. But <laughs> I believe you can use apple cider vinegar as well as a substitute, um, but they do recommend white vinegar. Um, and this is super cheap. I think a gallon of white vinegar, I think I got this for like $1.50 at the supermarket, right? Um, so this is also gonna be your cheapest as well as the most organic, right? So I actually see a lot of people using this um, for their trays. Um, so, um, and also vinegar will evaporate off the trays as well. Um, but after you do spray it, I do highly recommend put it on the shelf, let it evaporate out. Um, it shouldn't leave any residue on the trays. Um, you know, because, so I guess we, we can kind of circle into, um, you know, sanitizing your microgreens and your seeds and your sunflower now, right? So, um, the hydrogen peroxide solution here. Um, you can actually use that same um, mix uh, for actually spraying on top of uh, your mold on your sunflowers or, or other crops that I guess might have little mold um, attached to them or on the, on the grow medium, right? Um, this is probably your best bet. <laughs> to be honest, it is, it is almost the only bet. <laughs> so I actually did a few tests, right? Um, I actually decided that, you know, I had a little mold in my sunflower and I was like, I'm going to spray it with the vinegar solution just to see what it does. Let's see how the mold reacts, right? Because it's a natural disinfectant, right? So I sprayed a little bit on my sunflower. The next day I lift my tray up 
and I just have this huge, giant, brown, dead spot of sunflower, right? So this does not do that. This, this evaporates off almost instantaneously. As soon as it hits, you know, it'll, it'll disinfect, um, it'll kind of kill the mold, and then it'll just evaporate off, right? It's not gonna kill anything. It's not gonna kill your plant or harm the plant. The vinegar, on the other hand, just completely devastated the crop. I had to throw the entire thing away. It was extremely bad. So do not use vinegar to spray on your microgreens. Um, some of you are probably laughing at me because you're like, duh. <laughs> I, I just want to try it. I, I wanted to see what it, what it was, you know, what it was going to do, I guess, right? Um, so pretty cool though. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, you can use the same stuff. Um, you probably use a vinegar solution or anything like that. Um, I have stainless steel, everything that I use here. So um, it sanitizes very well, wipes down very well, dries really quickly. Um, and then, you know, there's, it's like little things too, right? Um, you have measuring cups, um, you know, sanitize these, right? We talked about your, um, I was gonna say, your, your, uh, your mason jars, right? So sanitize those, obviously, right? Um, I actually sanitize the, the, my, um, my tub of cocoa coir here, right? Every single time I run out of coir and I make more, I actually sanitize the entire tub, right? Because don't forget that cocoa coir is sitting there wet. I mean, it's moist, it's just sitting there and you know, who knows what kind of mold and, and bacteria is growing in that tub, um, that Tupperware, to, uh, you know, whatever this is called here, this, this, this big rubber made, right? So it, it's just sitting there kind of festering um, over time. And so when you finally, you know, uh, scoop that coir out, I definitely recommend sanitizing the rubber made container or whatever you're using to hold it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's same, it's same goes for everything. And, you know, anything that's gonna get into your product at all or your crop or your grow, your trays, um, you know, sanitize it, you know, and, and, and do it often. Um, cause I, I, I can't emphasize enough. You know, I see pictures all the time guys on Facebook and Reddit and it's always the same thing. What happened to my microgreens? Why are they dead? Why are they dampening off? Why is there mold? You know, it's just the same stuff over and over again. And then I, you know, I, I don't know what else to tell people, but you're not being clean enough. Right. Um, so if you can see my workspace, right? You, you know me, you see how I do things. I'm very meticulous and um, I'm organized and uh, I'm very clean the way I do things. And I try to do things as clean as possible. Um, you know, I, I very strict with my sanitization process, um, things like that. So, um, you know, I don't have too many issues at all. So um, anyways, uh, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Let them, uh, you know, leave them below in the comment box. Um, I hope I kind of went over all your questions and, you know, what process you might use now. You can kind of figure it out and think about it. So, um, but other than that, you know, um, I hope you really liked this video. Uh, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us. Um, we're going at, growing at an alarming rate, which is phenomenal. I'm really super excited and I couldn't have done it without you guys. So thank you so much. Um, so my next grow, uh, I should say my next video I'm hoping for next week, um, I'm actually going to be doing a review of the brand new bootstrap farmer trays. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm really excited about them. They look really cool. They look really, really cool. So other than that, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.